In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Friends, we gather this morning to celebrate this funeral liturgy, asking our Lord, who is compassionate, ever-loving, ever-giving, to welcome Chuck into the kingdom of peace and to give him the reward that he truly deserves. And we pray for his family, that God may comfort you and to strengthen you. And knowing that you have been blessed with such a good soul to inspire you and all of us. All those who have known Chuck do know how beautiful his life has been to us. Let us begin asking God to welcome him into the kingdom of peace. In the waters of baptism, Chuck died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And now we place the funeral pall. Please join us in singing our opening hymn on Eagle's Wings, found on page 593 of the Red Hymnals in the Friends of Your Pews. We will be singing verses 1, 2, and 4.
and let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, it is our certain faith that your son Jesus, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your loving son and faithful servant Chuck, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated now for our scripture reading, and we will have our first reader to step up. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me. Dwell in the heart. 
A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we, we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I extend my deep sentiments of sympathy to all of you, especially to the family of Chuck McLaughlin, and to everyone who has known uh, Check all through your life. I could say with all my faith that the Saturday evening Mass at St. James would not be the same without Chuck McLaughlin Sr. I think everybody knows 
that he and Joanne were one of the faithful, faithful couples that I have known as a priest. I think when I see their faith, how they conduct themselves and how they love each other is the most important thing we can think about today. If we want to know what is the true meaning of life, we have to look at the people like Chuck, who lived his faith by loving his family. And I have no doubt in believing that he has finished his mission to the best according to God's plan. And there is nothing more beautiful in this world than to live the faith and to love the family. I often share a simple story that happened a few years ago. You know, when I welcome children to the faith formation catechism classes, I'm at the door and then I welcome everybody's, you know, parents and children. So the parents are dropping off the kids and they're going back. So there was one dad. One day he came up to me and said, Father, my son has a question for you. And he's only like six years old. When a six-year-old has a question, I really don't want to answer it. <laughs> But of course, I said, what's your question? So he looked in my eye and said, why do people have to go back to God again? That was like a deep question for a six-year-old. So I was thinking maybe someone in the family must have died, like a grandpa, grandma. So he's thinking about it. Why do people have to go back to God again? And for a second, I have no idea what to tell him. But then I said, you know, being on this earth is like God sending us here for a purpose and a mission. We have a purpose and a mission. Sometimes we experience sadness. Sometimes we experience joy. There are difficult things. There are good things. But when we are done, don't you think that we should be going back where we came from? And I looked in his eye and I thought I had him right there. <laughs> but he looked at me and said, but I like it here. <laughs> and then I was trying to think, what should I say? Then I told him, you know, if you want to live here forever, there is a way. You can live here forever. If you listen to God, your mom and dad and your teachers. And he ran away from me. He didn't <laughs> want to listen. I think life is a beautiful gift. In spite of all the challenges, there is so much beauty in our hearts. And that becomes more joyful when we entrust that life into the hands of God. And that takes a lot of faith. I think Chuck is a great example. The way he and Joanne walked together into that gathering space. You know, I go early for mass and, you know, I'm all ready and I'm welcoming the people and I see Chuck and Joanne. And that's all I remember in my heart today. Their faith and their love for each other. And added to that, every time Suzanne was there with them, their eyes pops up. They're so proud to bring Suzanne to church. And Chuck was not leaving Suzanne for free. She said, Suzanne, you be the usher too. And she put her at that book stand and she gives the books and gives the smile. Suzanne has a beautiful smile. But no matter what was going on, I only saw the beauty of love and their faith. So today, as we come together to celebrate Chuck's life, it's important that we think of what life is all about. No matter how much we accomplish, how busy we can be, 
it's what's in your heart that counts at the end. How we live our faith and how we love our families. Sometimes we think, you know, families have to be perfect. Don't worry about it. Do what you can, even in imperfections. When we have struggles taking care of people, if you show love, that's the most important thing. Look at your own hearts. What makes us really happy? What we give to others, the pure love. For me today at this moment, I think of Chuck as truly a reflection of God who really showed his faith to all people by being a gentle, kind, and loving person. And we know he served in the Navy, giving his time, and he participated in Vietnam, so went through a lot of challenges, but he was a great listener. He listened to understand other people's concerns. And above all, his faith in Jesus is the greatest example to the family and to everyone who knew Chuck and Joanne and all the family. Our scripture today reveals about the mystery of life. You know, the book of Ecclesiastes, as we read this, there is time for everything, the beginning and the end. But what happens in between makes the beginning and the end more meaningful the in-between, what we make of what is in-between gives meaning to the beginning and the end, where we come from, where we are going. I think if we can keep that in mind, we always walk in the steps, footsteps of Jesus. And the second reading and the gospel give us that great affirmation that God is going to guide us and take care of us. So the Gospel of John chapter 14 that is read to us is in the context of Jesus at the Last Supper when he revealed to the disciples that his time had come to depart. He is giving the assurance to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry. Have faith in me and I will guide you. I think that's so important for us to know. Like the disciples, we could be worried about so many things. But as we worry, we need to entrust ourselves to God. And Jesus is uh, affirming their faith, telling them, even when I'm gone, I will come back to take care of you. So our loved ones, even though they are gone physically, they're always with us because the experiences that we have shared are never going to be taken away. There is a beautiful quote from Helen Keller who said, what we have once enjoyed, we can never lose. All that we love deeply on this earth becomes part of us. That's what she said. All that we love deeply on this earth becomes part of us. Think about our own relationships. What is the most beautiful thing in our life? People that we love deeply and that will be with us forever. Through death, we pass that stage, but that experience is always here. One of the church fathers, Saint John Chrysostom, in the fourth century, said something very inspiring. He said, those whom we love and lose are no longer where they were before, but they are now wherever we are. Those whom we love and lose are no longer where they were before, but they are now wherever we are. I think we carry our loved ones in our heart forever because the genuine faith and love 
is an experience of God. And there is nothing in the world that can uh, compromise that experience. So today, with all the family and friends, we express our deep sentiments of sympathy to the McLaughlin family. I think Chuck lived a beautiful life and one experience of them, the last time I saw Chuck and Joanne was after Suzanne's funeral, they both came to visit me at St. Anne in Barrington. And at that time, Joanne was not really in the best shape and I was wondering, why did you drive all the way? And I just could feel their love so deeply. She was walking slow, holding the door and the step, we had a step to get in and they just want to come and, and make me feel that I am loved, that I uh, thanked whatever the situation. So I truly remember the deep love today. So let us ask God to strengthen us so that we be renewed in God's love and be like Chuck, to have great faith and to love our families. No matter how difficult it is, if we can show love, we will be healed. So let us ask God to welcome Chuck and to be reunited with Joanne and Suzanne. Maybe they are ushering everybody into heaven, making sure they get their spots and they have their hymn books to sing in heaven, whatever situation. But I know they are all united in God's love. So my prayers for all of you, that God blesses you and strengthens you. Amen. Please stand now as we offer to God our prayers and petitions and Allison. For Chuck, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our brother Chuck, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Chuck, that may be, they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pause in silence with prayers that each of us has brought to this funeral mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come to you today as we celebrate the beautiful life of Chuck McLaughlin Sr. As we reflect his life of faith and love. May we be inspired to have our faith in you at all times. Give us the courage that in our struggles and challenges, we may never be discouraged, but always look up to you, knowing that with you all things are possible. As we pray for the repose of the soul of Chuck, we pray for his family, children, grandchildren, in-laws, and everyone who have known him. 
may we be strengthened in our resolve to trust you until the end. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings for the salvation of your loving son and faithful servant, Chuck, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him an eternal friend who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Savior. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, but not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel for our Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed loving and forgiving, O Lord, the source of all goodness and grace. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. bread and drink this cup. 
cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and with all those who lead, guide, and inspire us every day. Remember your loving son and your faithful servant, Chuck McLaughlin Sr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with Christ's resurrection. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your kingdom. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. asking God to welcome Chuck into the kingdom of peace and to comfort the family gathered here. Let us pray with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and be safe from all distress, fear, anxiety, and sickness, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church Gather here today, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, Matt.
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ, who is our resurrection, our new life. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May our sharing in this holy meal bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, Blessed Are They, found on page 636.
Please stand now for our concluding prayers. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Chuck may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Chuck. May our farewell express our affection for him, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. For our prayer of commendation, I invite everyone to please raise your hand towards Chuck as we pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings that you bestowed upon Czech's life in this world. They are signs to us of your goodness and grace and fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Please join us in singing Be Not Afraid found on page 596. <laughs>
for the kingdom shine.